Merciless. Time Warner presents Predators of the Wild. Six collectible volumes of compelling wildlife action. From the ocean's deep to the plains of the Serengeti, the vicious struggle for survival is unending, and the difference between hunter and hunted could depend on the size of an appetite at any given time. Restless sharks, savage lions, killer whales. Get an uncensored and unflinching view of the stunning tactics that make them nature's most efficient hunters. Wild dogs, giant grizzlies, exotic cats. Time Warner presents Predators of the Wild, a revealing look at how nature's true hunters teach their young to survive in an untamed wilderness. Beautifully photographed in some of the world's most exotic locales, Predators is a breathtaking look at nature's savage beasts. Collect all six volumes, including the ocean's most terrifying predator, Shark. Get up close and personal with these razor-toothed killers and see how they track the scent of fear and why their primal urge to hunt is never satisfied. In Lion, you'll watch a lioness teach her cubs the rules of survival. Witness the grace and beauty of the ultimate tacticians in Cheetah and Leopard. Grizzly profiles a majestic beast who fears no animal, no man. And many more titles from an exciting collection of video cassettes, each featuring an in-depth look at nature's wild, how they create life, and how they take it away. Capture Time Warner's Predators of the Wild. Environmentally packaged and collectively priced volumes of pure adrenaline-packed excitement. A rare and memorable collection your whole family will enjoy again and again. Available from Warner Home Video. Wherever life exists on Earth, and in whatever form, there are predators and there is prey. On the wide plains of Africa, killers and victims. This is the closely interwoven story of the lives of both and the death of some, the hunters and the hunted. The beginning of the wet season is a desperate time for hunters. Some face starvation. The plains have been empty for five months. The annual migration has not reached them yet. Then suddenly, salvation appears on the horizon. Marching columns of antelope and zebra appear, transforming the landscape. The first wave of up to half a million wildebeest swarm onto one small corner of the Serengeti National Park in Tanzania. They bring with them new life. Many more calves will be born here before the migration moves on to the fresh grazing the rains produce ahead of them.
A displaying Cory bustard, so recently alone, now finds itself surrounded by thudding hooves and twitching tails. To the hunters, this huge gathering of animals represents a time of plenty. But the hunted are not defenseless. Zebra have acute senses, speed, and the will to live on their side. The chief defense for the Thompson's gazelle is acceleration and the ability to jink and swerve. Wildebeest are the prime targets, not only because they have small calves with them that are easy to catch, but because there are unimaginable numbers for the hunters to choose from. Wildebeest, young and old, will fall to the hunters of the plains. As a species, though, the death of many thousands is of little significance. The lions, like all the predators, have been through a long, lean time. A single calf will not feed them all, so claiming a share becomes a matter of dispute within the pride. Up until recently, the lions had lived in neighboring areas of woodland, which supported a small population of resident prey. Now the lions are back on the plains to make the most of the bounty while it lasts. Other predators are returning too. Hyenas were once thought to be scavengers, living off lions' kills. The truth is very different. Hyenas are skillful hunters in their own right, who lose more food to lions than they gain. Competition causes fierce rivalry between the two hunters. For a lioness, the arrival of the migration is the optimum moment to have cubs. If she's well fed, she'll have plenty of milk and an early litter has a good chance of being weaned well before the herds move on again. Cheetahs also time their breeding to coincide with the migration. While the lions concentrate on zebra and wildebeest, cheetahs specialize in killing gazelle, reducing competition between predators. Both lions and cheetahs include warthog, especially suckling pig, in their diet. It's hard to think of rhinos as victims, but young ones occasionally fall prey not only to lions, but to hyenas as well. The jackal, too, has hungry young mouths waiting to be fed. Her three cubs are old enough to leave the den where they were born. 
Like hyenas, jackals were thought to scrounge most of their food from lion kills. But they are capable of killing antelope fawns and baby warthogs. And finally, the most spectacular hunters of all. Like lions, hunting dogs live in groups and share the task of rearing young. But while each lioness gives birth to two or three cubs, all 13 of these puppies belong to one mother. Only the dominant male and female within the pack breed. What the hunting dog, indeed any hunter, is looking for is easy meat. The hunter has to balance the energy expended in the chase with the energy it gains from the kill. The dog's object is always to divide the herds and get them moving in order to pick out an animal that is sick, old, less agile, or more isolated than the rest. Hunting dogs are very similar to wolves in that they work cooperatively as a pack. This gives them an advantage over lone hunters, but they need a high success rate. They have more mouths to feed. Like the cheetah, they hunt out in the open, but instead of sprinting after their prey in short bursts, they rely on stamina. They can maintain a steady lope for half an hour or more. Hunting dogs can do 25 miles per hour and keep it up for several minutes. They wear their victims out. good use of team tactics. While one dog concentrates on distracting the mother, the others home in on the calf. A wildebeest mother often puts up a heroic defense, but this time she gives up. For a small animal like this, death is often mercifully rapid. With 13 puppies to feed, the dogs often have to hunt both early morning and late evening. During the hot hours of the day, a partial truce exists between hunters and hunted. When evening comes, the dogs are on the prowl.
At this time of year, calves are the easiest targets, but the hunters don't always have it their own way. This time there is a difference. The mother refuses to abandon the fight. Against all probabilities, her valiant efforts pay off. The dogs have met their match. The wildebeest desperately wants to lead her calf away, but she's afraid one wrong move might trigger another attack. Dogs are exhausted, but only when the odds have evened up does she decide it's safe to leave. escaped serious injury. It will live for now. Vultures are not equipped to kill. Instead, they scavenge from the hunters. Soaring above the plains, they scan the landscape for signs of death. A carcass lying out in the open attracts vultures from miles around. Tawny eagles are efficient hunters, but they're not above stealing an easy meal. For the predators, the difference between success and failure is life and death. Holding a kill is yet another battle. dogs lose too much of their meal, their pups will suffer. The big griffin vultures have much the same problem. They nest 70 miles away in the Gol Mountains. Even for a soaring bird like a vulture, traveling back and forth to the plains burns up a lot of energy. Their needs are as urgent as those of the hunters they exploit. Competition is just as fierce among the larger predators, like lions and hyenas. The hyenas have young hidden in this den. Porcupines are edible, but too prickly to tackle. They compete for den space, but are no threat to the puppies. Hyenas were thought to scavenge their food because they were observed by day. 
Like lions, hyenas do most of their killing under the cover of darkness. This hyena clan has brought down an adult wildebeest just after daybreak. A gang of hyenas is no match for a large pride of marauding lions. This time, the lions have made a kill and are being plagued by hyenas. The competition between the two species is so great, they'll kill each other given the chance. Even if the hyenas only manage to snatch a mouthful of meat, it's still worth hanging around until the end. A lion's jaws are too weak to crush bones, and here the hyenas have the advantage. They can crunch up even the toughest bones and extract the nutritious marrow in their center. Both lions and hyenas have to contend with jackals. Although their individual needs are small in comparison to the larger predators, a group of them can mean a substantial loss. The lioness has eaten her fill, but her priority now is to protect the carcass for other members of the pride. The jackals will be lucky to get more than a few scraps, but there's a new source of food.
Together with all the other plains animals, the Thompson's gazelle are now bearing their young. A newborn gazelle can run almost from birth, but not fast enough to outrun most predators. On its feet, it is conspicuous in its helplessness, so female gazelles leave their fawns lying hidden in clumps of grass. Here, they are relatively safe from predators, like lions and hyenas, who hunt largely by sight. But a dog hunts with its nose, and jackals belong to the dog family. Incredibly, the normally timid female gazelles band together, risking their own lives to defend the young fawn. is beaten by the kind of cooperative effort often seen among hunters, but rarely among the hunted. Hyenas live in closely knit communities called clans. Both hyenas and hunting dogs are tied to their dens during the breeding season. But unlike hunting dogs, who roam over great distances, hyenas hold a clan territory, clearly marked with its occupant's scent. The scent warns rival clans to keep out. The zebras recognize from their gait and body attitude that the approaching hyenas are out to kill. The herd is protected by a dominant stallion who can break a hyena's powerful jaws with a well-aimed kick. He places himself between his mares and the potential threat. The herd is too well protected the hyenas go off to look for easier food. The easiest of all, a wildebeest has just given birth. The mother tosses the calf in the air. She's really butting at an approaching hyena, but in the confusion, the calf got in the way. It's a desperate situation, but one for which she's prepared to fight to the death Against one hyena, she has a good chance, but other members of the clan are joining in. The hyena's hunting style demands caution, quite different from the relentless pursuit of the hunting dogs. When the wildebeest runs, the hyenas make their move. A pair of jackals starts to harass it too. But if the mother wildebeest keeps up the fight, she can save her calf. Ha <laughs> ha! 
As she tires, she becomes further separated from the youngster. But even then, she doesn't give up. Finally, she's overwhelmed. The hyenas have pups to feed and desperately need the food. While their cubs are very young, cheetahs hide them in thickets, marshes, or under boulders. Their mother has to leave them to hunt, and unguarded, they're vulnerable to attack by lions and hyenas. As soon as they're strong enough to keep up, at about eight weeks old, the female takes them with her. Although they are a hindrance, at least she can protect them. A cheetah usually avoids the more powerful hyenas, but for the sake of her young, she'll risk all to defend them. Cheetahs are essentially sprinters. They're the fastest animal on four legs, reaching a top speed of 68 miles per hour. But they can only keep up this speed for about three to 400 yards. They often trip prey with one of their forelegs and then clamp their jaws around the animal's throat until it suffocates. The cubs learn hunting techniques by imitating their mother. A yearling wildebeest is a big animal for a single cheetah to kill. This one was probably sick or injured, making it an easy target. She moves the carcass under a bush to keep it hidden from vultures. Cheetah cubs start to stalk prey from about three months old, although they rarely catch anything. In fact, cubs are responsible for less than 10% of the kills eaten by the family. Cheetahs sometimes give birth to as many as six cubs, but it's estimated that as many as 90% die before they are three months old. Lions are often responsible for many of these deaths, but even the so-called king of the beasts struggles to survive. Only about one in six of their hunts is successful.
Lions usually stalk at night, but with cubs to feed, they're often forced out during the day as well. It's difficult enough hunting under cover of darkness, but in broad daylight, the odds are definitely against them. All prey species have an acute sense of smell and excellent sight. Ostriches have the added advantage of great height. The herds of zebra and wildebeest often seek out these birds since they're the first to spot danger. Ostrich's nervous behavior alerts all the other animals in the vicinity and ruins the lion's chances. Some antelope can sprint at speeds of up to 50 miles per hour, while a lion's top speed is 36 miles per hour. These grand gazelle, knowing they can outrun their enemy, prefer to keep the hunters in sight where they can see what they're up to. So they follow instead of fleeing, but keeping a safe distance between themselves and the enemy. Lions often hunt by setting up an ambush. On approaching the herds, the pride members fan out, then lie low, while a teammate circles round the back and attempts to drive the prey into the trap. Lioness's attention is diverted by a newborn wildebeest calf and the ambush forgotten. Lions are not sprinters. They rely heavily on teamwork. The lioness rapidly runs out of steam, and with no backup, even a very small wildebeest calf is able to outrun it. Fortunately, 
the herds continued to walk towards the trap. But this zebra stallion is at the peak of health. Its getaway ensures the survival of the fittest. Again, it's the lions which lose out. Some animals are just too big to tackle. The pride acknowledge that they're outclassed and saunter off to quench their thirst instead. Bachelor bull buffalo are reputed to be the most dangerous animals in Africa because they're virtually fearless, short-tempered and aggressive. They weigh over one and a half tons and are well armed. The lions are heading for a nearby waterhole, but the buffalo want it for themselves, and they're not going to let a pride of lions stand in their way. Lions sometimes kill buffalo, although they generally pick on the smaller calves and cows. This is another reason why the bulls are so intolerant of the big cats. Hunting under the midday sun is exhausting. It's also thirsty work. Lions like to drink every day, and prides will fight hard for possession of a waterhole. They're also good hunting grounds. The lions can hide in the reeds and pounce on unsuspecting prey coming for a drink. But now is not the time to launch an attack. Lions do kill the occasional baby rhino, but a mature black rhino could gore or crush a lion to death. Neither party is in any real danger, but both would feel easier without the other's company. Once again, it's the lions who are the losers. Uh -huh. 
The male lion's main role in the pride is to defend the females, cubs, and their territory from intruders. No stranger is tolerated. In this case, it's a lioness. Even so, she's chased back over the home pride's boundaries. the rest of his pride will back him up if necessary. The intruder is the sole survivor of a small neighboring pride. On her own, her chances of survival are slim. She's desperate to team up with other lions and prepared to take risks, even though she knows a foreign male could kill her. An adult male in this situation would stand no chance, but after a few days, this lioness will probably be accepted into the pride. Bachelor males are forced into a solitary existence. Their only hope of survival is to steal prey from more efficient but less powerful hunters. In the Serengeti, this usually means hyenas. brought to bay a female and baby eland, the largest of all the antelope. The mother puts up a spirited defense, but she's badly outnumbered. Such activity on the open plains is bound to attract attention. This young male is obviously not alone. A solitary animal wouldn't take on a large clan with such confidence. He must be very hungry to take on an adult eland single-handed. Male lions are always the first to eat. Their superior size and strength enable them to pull rank over lionesses. There's rivalry between males too, but although there's a lot of noise, they rarely injure each other. Ha <laughs> ha! 
Amid all the spitting and snarling, the lioness judges that the contestants are preoccupied enough for it to be safe to join in. In lion society, it's a matter of grab what you can, and it's an advantage to be first. The rest of the pride has arrived, making a total of seven, but there's nothing left for them or the hyenas. For both hunter and hunted, life is an eternal struggle. The weak must die so the strong may live. <laughs> 